listening to Range Minded from Independence Indoor Shooting. If you like what you hear, make sure you subscribe to us from wherever you get your podcast from and make sure you follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Range Minded Podcast. It really does help us out. This is episode 131, where we talk about insecurities and worries about carrying, objections to carrying, and excuses and good reasons not to carry. Then we take all of those and figure out how you can mitigate those worries, insecurities, and go over some times that really you should not be carrying. Thanks for listening, and as always, we hope you enjoy episode 131 of Range Minded, The Excuses Not to Carry. Hello and welcome to Range Minded from Independence Indoor Shooting. My name is Mark Long and I am joined as always by... Hey, it's Steve Zimmerman all the way on the Eastern Front. Yeah, and it's just the two of us today. Nick Hoffer is uh, MIA at the moment. Yeah, he had... uh, I hope he had things. I hope everything's okay. We we just, I guess, missed the memo or something. It's all good. No worries. Yeah, he's uh, he's still uh, still around, still a member of the the podcast officially, but... uh, He's uh, he's a busy guy, you know. He works uh, Hoftech he's Industries a, is uh, is a busy operation, so he is very busy, and he that guy never stops, anyways. Sure doesn't. So he's always um, doing something. But you're also uh, a busy guy this weekend. You've been busy training. It was a good weekend, yeah. Like, um, so I I picked up jujitsu. Me and my son Brigham that we heard on the podcast before. Yeah, we decided it it was it was time. So I talked to Adam Boyce, who's a good friend of the podcast. Sure is. And I asked him. I asked him about where he he rolls around on the mats, and and uh, I'm I'm just going to do a shameless plug. So Vibe Jiu Jitsu in Idaho Falls is is uh, is where Adam goes. Yeah. So we went and hung out. We took like three or four classes. You know, they didn't charge us. Just to make sure that that's where we wanted to be because it's not cheap. It's not a cheap gym to go to. No, nothing. Uh, uh, Jiu Jitsu Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is. Yeah, but but I'll tell you what, it's totally worth it. Like, um, uh, Jeremy and Brandon, the two guys that, that run the show there, they're both black belts. They're very proficient, and they're just way cool guys. Like, I'm pretty out of shape. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty terrible right now at at the whole game. Um, but man, there's no judgment. They're like they're not even no even like little wisecracks. Like they're just they're totally professional. They're totally cool. And I tell you, all the other students there, they're they're all just solid and uh, super cool. Anyway, that's as so. I've been I've been playing jujitsu down there at Vibe, and then uh, so I usually try and get over there on a Thursday night. Saturday is just open mats. We just go ho- go around and roll around. That's pretty cool. So that's what what I did Saturday. It is. It's a lot of fun. Asked a lot of questions, like, you know, try to get some of the basic stuff down. And uh, and I knew Adam had a class, a seminar that afternoon. It was full, 100% full. No way. So I knew I wasn't getting in. I wasn't going to get into it. So I shot him a text. I said, hey, man, I hope you have a, I hope you have a good class. I wish I could make it. I didn't get it in time. And he's like, oh, hey, I'm glad you texted me because I just got off the phone with a guy from Helena that can't make it. Oh, so you were able to sneak in there. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, he's like, just just come on in. Don't worry about it. Just just come hang out. Nice. I was like, oh, well, all right. So it uh, it went from like a two or three hour training day to like a nine or ten hour training day, and uh, it was a lot of fun. That's a Lots long day, but yeah, there was, definitely uh, fun. It 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 was a long day, and Adam actually had some other, and I don't even know their names, and and even if I did, they probably wouldn't want me sharing their names. But uh, he has a couple other gentlemen with him. Well, one one man in particular, older guy, you could tell he was old. Um, at first, I kind of I, I kind of giggled because he was just kind of goofy. But it turns <laughs> out this guy has li- lived in Thailand and he's done all sorts of knife fighting and he's gone all over the place and he got in martial blade concepts like at the very beginning. Okay. <laughs> and and. Uh, and and the two two of Adam's Adam's helpers, Bob Boston, I can't remember the other guy's name. They're like, you know, that the older gentleman come over and be like, hey, do do this, or do that. And it was a little different than what the curriculum was. And you know, when Adam would walk around, he's like, no, Steve, like, if he tells you to do it that way, he's like, there is a reason. He says, if you had any idea who this guy was, um, like, you would be amazed. <laughs> really? So I was like, okay, I'll I'll listen to this guy too. <laughs> yeah, I don't even remember the guy's name. He said his name but uh i mean he does all sorts of collie stick fighting and like all all sorts of stuff so this guy 
whoever he was, I, I, it was an honor because by the end of the, the end of the training session at six o'clock, I mean, I, I definitely had respect for the guy cause he, he absolutely knew what he was talking about. And he happened to hang out with, with me and my, my training partner more than anybody else out there. So oh, really? we must've been doing something right, I guess, or something wrong. Maybe we were doing something <laughs> wrong and he, he felt like he had to really hang out with us. Well, Nonetheless, and- it was a long day Saturday, Yeah, but it was good. Yeah. It sounds like a great, a, a really fun day. And, uh, yeah, the, if, if Adam tells you to listen to somebody else, then I it's, you definitely want to want to heed that. Yeah, yeah, and and I'm going to throw another plug out, Adam. Uh, well, w- with Vibe Jiu Jitsu and and Spartan Mode, Adam, the same gym uh, every Monday night. If you're in the Idaho Falls area, um, he's going to be doing weekly, like short seminars, little classes, and we're going to be doing like stuff from the mats, like practical like how to get out of the holster how to draw a knife in an in an attack like like actual in the heat of the moment like let's put the theory to the test and see if it works it'll it's going to be a lot of fun like real deal stuff yeah i mean obviously we're not using real guns and real knives but you know we'll be in street clothes carrying appendix with a with a training firearm and you know get in the heat of the moment, get jumped or whatever, and then see what happens trying to get the, get the firearm out of appendix carrier or three o'clock or six o'clock or whatever, you know, it'll yeah. be, it'll be kind of an eye opening experience. I think. Well, that's a, that's a good, I mean, that's good to know that there's still Tons ways to, fun. still ways to train uh, no matter what, even uh, despite the current situation, you know? Yeah. Yeah. There absolutely are ways to train. If you're not training physically, at least train mentally and get some good books and, and uh, something. <laughs> Don't, yeah, don't uh, don't stop because COVID's here. Yeah, um, and that's kind of what we're talking about too, a little bit. Not necessarily training, but I guess the practice of carrying and um, yeah, why you can carry probably more often than you think. Yeah, and and you should should more than you think. So yeah, we're gonna kind of go through some of the excuses and and uh, and maybe we'll kind of bypass what what we hear or you know what people say about no, I don't want to carry today because of X or whatever. So yeah, let's see if we can bust some of these, uh, these excuses. Yeah. Out I've, I've got a couple here. And the other thing too, is I will say, and, and even though he's not here, Nick has brought up this point, which is a very good point multiple times where sometimes you might just not be in the mindset to carry. You might not be, you know, right. Maybe in the mood or you're um, more often, maybe you're distracted or you're upset or something like that. Or um, you just, feel like it's not a great idea to carry that day. And um, you should definitely listen to your body and listen to your mind if that's the case. Um, you know, so I wanted to preface with that because, you know, you, you shouldn't necessarily carry even if you're not like maybe in the right frame of mind, if that makes sense. Yeah. And I a hundred percent agree with that. Um, if you're not uh, carrying a gun, let's just this way. Carrying a gun is a huge responsibility. And if you're not willing to live up to that responsibility, then I respect that decision. And I hope that you don't have to, you know, that that's not the day that, that you have to, to need it. Right. Um, but that, that goes to say, like, I mean, if you had to go to court and you were carrying a gun and, and maybe you were on extra pain meds or something that day, I mean, that could definitely play against you. So if you don't feel right, um, if, if you're on some kind of a medication or something that just isn't your day, then, then I respect that decision. Yeah. Same here. So, but you have to know yourself and all that, but Sometimes I think people do have like excuses or objections to carrying where you might be overthinking it or you might be a little more worried than um, you need to be. Um, So I came up with a list of a couple different um, couple different excuses or a common uh, maybe questions um, or like what if situations that people have. Um, Figure we could just kind of go down the list and talk about them and see what you think. Okay, let's do it. So. uh, the first one is, and I think most everybody um, has this problem, at least when they start out, is that uh, I don't want to carry because I'm afraid of printing and people are going to know that I am carrying a firearm. Yeah. You know, I, I've heard that a few times selling guns, you know, behind the counter there. Yeah. And honestly, in, in an all reality, the only one that really notices you printing is you. Um, unless it is like you're wearing a skin tight t-shirt or something, then sure. But most of the time it's, uh, <laughs> it's you, you're just like have this self-conscious, um, thing that people are going to look at you and notice your gun right away. 
I, I know I, in the beginning I was always worried about it. And, you know, sometimes I still am worried about it, but uh, I just try to make sure that I, I wear the right apparel. And a lot of times it is the color of like your t-shirt that can make or break the the difference too. Yeah, that's true. Because that, that sounds, sounds kind of weird, but it's true. Well, and the other thing I've, I've noticed is that, you know, when you look at yourself in the mirror, you see yourself in a certain way. And if there's any little small difference, because you look at yourself, I mean, most of the time, you know, at least once a day and you kind of know how clothes fall and how clothes fit. And if you just notice one thing that might be different, you'll think everybody else will notice that as well. But if you think about it, when you go out, like go out to the mall or shopping or to a restaurant or whatever, and just kind of, or a grocery store and just people watch. And you'll notice how many people are actually on their phones. Yeah. I mean, if you're kind of having any modicum of situational awareness over your usual, oh, like man. over the average person anyway, you'll notice how many people are on their phones, not paying attention, not concerned with anything else other than the screen in front of their face. Yeah, more so than ever. It is. It really is actually kind of scary to me to think that all these people, we talk about Cooper Color Codes, you know, back well, quite a few episodes ago. Yeah. Um, you know, in, in condition white all the time, completely oblivious. You know, we talked about Adam's class. He added a new video. If you ever take any Adam's seminars, he he has uh, the first few minutes of his, of his seminars are actual knife attacks. Yeah. Um, and they are kind of gruesome, but there's a, uh, there's a new one I hadn't seen. I've taken this class a few times <laughs> and uh, of, a, of a gal, she's on her cell phone um, facing a wall. It's kind of odd. She's, she's facing this wall with her back to the crowd, which is first of all, strange, a terrible idea. Yeah. But, but she didn't even notice like this guy was less than two feet behind her for probably 30 seconds. Wow. Um, and compl- she was completely oblivious. And then the second she turned her around, he just throws a right hook and knocks her out. Wow. And, and, uh, yeah. So I guess that's a little bit extreme of what you're talking about as far as situational awareness and, and walking around. <laughs> I, I know your, your idea was like, look at all the people that aren't paying attention to you. Right. Um, and that's exactly, the, exactly the thing. People aren't going to notice unless you're, unless you're doing something weird like wanting to get printing you know want want to show off your print nobody's gonna sh- nobody's gonna see it right and um, yeah just, that's the point is just it- kind of alter your clothes a little bit it's good yeah and you can always wear especially it, it's easier in the colder months as you get more uh in into like wearing more layers uh, like a hoodie or a button down or a jacket or whatever cover garments really do make a big difference um and like I said, I mean, people aren't oh, yeah. going to notice what's going on. They're not going to notice. They're not even going to notice you, let alone look at your belt line, whether you're carrying appendix or, um, you know, yeah. strong side hip or whatever. Um, you could probably, I mean, I've noticed it too, where people are open carrying and you don't notice it at first, even as a gun person, you know? Well, I went into the Boise mall last time I was in town. Yeah. And this guy, the, this guy was walking through the mall, open carry. Really? And I don't know how many people noticed it. I noticed it right as he got out of the car, we kind of parked at the same time. And, sure. and I was actually, first I was like, what the hell is this guy doing? And I was like, <laughs> good on him. <laughs> yeah. Good on him for open carrying because I, I wouldn't do it in the mall personally. Well, and then that's another thing is that if people uh, notice that you are carrying or whatever, it's usually either like law enforcement who will probably just kind of let you know that, Hey, thanks for carrying. You know, I've heard that that does happen um, or other concealed carriers where they're probably not going to say anything anyway. Yeah, probably. Yeah. So, so if you're scared of printing, wh- let's see, what are some of the things that we can do to, to overcome that fear? Cause I'm sure that's a definite legitimate fear that, that people are feeling. I've heard it before. Yeah. Um, started, I would, so, I would say start at places that are, you're comfortable at where maybe go to the grocery store that you usually go to and, and walk around and do your grocery shopping and, and, um, start out. Maybe if you are thinking about carrying now is probably the better or perfect time to start because you get to have kind of more layers and it looks less out of place as you, um, yeah. as you go in and out of places or, um, even I remember reading, uh, just start carrying with a holster without a gun in it first, just to get the feeling of a holster like on your person is a great way to start. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, maybe, maybe you could even, 
I guess you got to be careful because you don't want to be drinking while, but you could go around with, uh, with friends, you know, and don't tell them that you're caring. And sure. And then if somebody's men- mentioned something that, cause those people know you, like they, they know how you dress, they know how you normally look, how you normally walk. So that might be a really good, good option. Um, because they see you all the time or, or more frequently than just anybody in the mall. Yeah. Or, or, you know, kind of to take that another step is to go around with people who do carry all the time and just kind mm-hmm. of go through the day with them, maybe go to lunch, go run a couple errands, go to get, a, you know, some coffee or something like that and kind of see what they do and maybe have them like walk behind you or in front of you and see if you're printing or whatever, you know what I mean? If you're really that worried about it, um, just kind of go through the motions of the day. And the more you do that, the more comfortable you'll be. And the more that you'll even notice that people aren't paying attention either, you know? Yeah. Cause I really do think a lot of the, you know, we, we talked about just kind of self criticism or whatever you want to call it. That's where the uncomfortability comes from is it's, it's something new to us. We've changed. I wouldn't say, I guess it is kind of a lifestyle change in a way we've changed something very significant in our lives. Yeah. And, and so it's kind of a step and, and uh, it's exciting in a way, <laughs> not like, uh, not like, Oh, I'm super cool. I can do whatever I want. Exciting. But I have control a little bit more control of my own personal safety. Exciting. Yeah. It's a, it's a kind of, I guess, freeing in a way too. If, if you want to put it as, as opposed to exciting, it's a little more freeing. You're a little more self-reliant. Um, but yeah, just the more you do it and the more you practice, the the less that that, um, you know, uh, self or insecurity about printing uh, happens. And, you know, if somebody so let's but let's take it a, a different way. If what would you do, Steve, if somebody if you were carrying at a grocery store or something like that and somebody noticed and they weren't like a gun person, they were just like, hey, are you carrying a gun? <laughs> well, I like I like to say there's a th- or I like to think there's a couple of things I'd say would be like yeah because a cop's too heavy to carry around or, <laughs> or something like that. Most of the time I just say yep and just keep walking or something like that. Has that happened um, to you or no? No, I I mean I've opened carried and had some looks um, before, but nobody's nobody's ever really noticed me at least not that I'm aware of that. Oh yeah, you're you're carrying a gun, right? Um, I don't know I. I, I don't know really exactly what I would say until I was in that situation. And I'd, I'd probably just say, yep. And, and move on. I, like, I, I don't really want to engage in any sort of philosophical discussion. I think that, that's not something I'd really want to sure. participate in unless I can use it as some kind of a teaching moment. Maybe. Yeah. I guess it really just depends on the situation when it happens. But I mean, if you think about it, you've carried for quite a while and you've never run into that situation. So I think that shows that how remote that that situation actually the probability of that happening is, you know, yeah. going to occur or not going to occur. A, yeah. That I'm aware of. I've, I've never had anybody really say anything to me. Right. So that's a good thing. Um, that's, I think that's yeah. the people's number one, most common fear and security is, is that you're, you're going to be printing and maybe you notice the one part of your shirt that's, that's, you know, um, wrinkled differently. It's falling different. Yeah, exactly. But Um, you know, the other thing I would say is that, you know, when you watch YouTube videos of people who are carrying, like I've noticed this on, um, warrior poet society or even T-Rex arms or whatever, they're standing in front of the camera, you know, it's like a waist high shot. So you have like most of their body in the frame and you're, at least for me, I'm looking at their face when they're talking, like you would a normal, you know, human person in an, like, or rather a face to face interaction. And they're like, Oh yeah, by the way, I'm a human person, right? A a real human, live human being. But, um, (laughs) You know, then they're like, oh, by the way, I'm also appendix carrying this Glock 19 with a light on it and an extra mag and a red dot or whatever. And it's like, I didn't even notice. And so if you're not, if you, if that's happened to you while you're watching a YouTube video and you haven't even noticed when somebody like, you know, draws their firearm out from an appendix style carry, you're probably not going to get noticed either. You know what I mean? Now, I will say that, you know, you might want to change your movements a little bit to kind of make sure you don't, um, accidentally remove that concealment, you know, like if you're going to bend down to pick something up that you uh, have dropped, or maybe it's on a, you're reaching for something on a high shelf or whatever, you've got to kind of think about those situations. Do you agree? Right. Oh, absolutely. And that has happened to me before without anybody saying it. Like I remember going to sportsman's warehouse to get some shoes. And that's when I used to carry at six o'clock and, 
and it's pretty hard to put on shoes without your your t-shirt coming up in the back or or that the, you know the, the grip of the gun really angling out away from your body right as you're tying a shoe so i i 100 percent know that's happened to me before i i remember feeling very uncomfortable actually from that really? experience um and and i don't carry six o'clock anymore i don't need anybody um disarming me before i turn around that's why i choose not to right uh, maybe that's maybe that's maybe that's an unnecessary fear but um it's definitely a possibility so i don't do that anymore yeah but Better you're absolutely right because uh you're you're right if you're reaching up high or you're you know bending one way or the other that that exposes maybe a strong side holster um that might freak somebody out and and uh you know, people are weird lately. Like it might, might surprise somebody. So you, you need to carry or, or have garments or, or a jacket or something in a way that, that isn't going to flash that holster. Yeah. So it's just something to keep in mind, but that's, that's again, a different thing than, than printing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, but that was, yeah, that was my first, my first biggest excuse that I've heard or, or kind of insecurity about carrying that you're going to print and everybody's going to know people aren't paying attention that much. And once you kind of realize that once you're, you've carried a few times, you're, you're going to become a lot more comfortable with it a lot faster. Yeah. And, and like you said, and we talked about last week about wintertime carry, um, sweatshirts are awesome. (laughs) Hoodies are great. That that just adds a a big fluffy layer. Um, now, now there's downside too. If you, you have to overcome that, if you're coming from concealed, but as far as carrying that, that is a huge helper. Yeah. For, for the guy carrying even just the comfort. Yeah. The comfort of carrying is, is a lot easier to handle. So, yeah. um, but speaking of like clothing and, and that kind of stuff, um, one of the things that you might have to think about is, uh, what if you have to dress nicely? And, and I do understand this struggle. <laughs> yeah, that, that's that's one so, of the reasons that I, uh, I put it up there. I thought that that was relevant. Is that um, you? If you have to dress nicely, obviously things are usually a little more form fitting. You can't get away with wearing a hoodie. Maybe your uh, dress pants are a little slimmer than your usual pair of jeans. Um, yep. You know, so there's a lot of different things to consider. So what about what would you do in that kind of instance? Well, so I like to wear a suit often. Um, and I tr- still try to carry appendix as much as I can. But what happens is, and, and maybe you can kind of visualize this in your mind's eye, is, is that holster's there. I got my dress belt and a dress shirt. And everything kind of kind of pushes out there at, at the belt buckle. And for me, it's extremely obvious. Like, And, and maybe it's not to anybody else. You know, we talk about printing. But you just got all these extra layers all coming into one spot. And... And it's kind of frustrating and sometimes it's even uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I've tried, I've tried, uh, I think it was the five eleven compression shirt that had the holsters under the armpits. Oh yeah. Um, I did, I didn't wear that for very long. I, I, it's actually stuck in a drawer because it doesn't cover my, my trigger. Right. If I had to go in to, to reach for that firearm in a panic and I'm squeezing, I mean, I could easily take a round into the thoracic cavity or maybe shoot somebody behind me or something, right. you know? So uh, that was kind of a, an unpleasant option after I really thought about it. So I haven't really found anything other than, than my hot, regular half tack holster. I just kind of go off center of the body line just a little bit to try and try and change that whole belt buckle and sure. everything coming into one spot there. Well, it's tough. I mean, there are some nice holsters out there and maybe I just need to, you know, kind of move to strong side carry or, Heck, maybe even a shoulder holster, but I really don't like either of those options. Yeah, the problem with the shoulder holster is because that's, I think, where a lot of people go as their first kind of thought. I mean, either from James Bond or, um, you know, seeing detectives or something like that, you know. Miami Vice, buddy. Miami Vice, exactly. But, um, you know, you may have that problem where you're pointing it at somebody and um, you also might not have the practice um, to be able to draw that way. And, you, you know, like you said, under the heat of... Uh, in the stress of a situation, you may be running into some issues and bigger issues than what you would normally be, you know? I guarantee if you're a new, a new to the shoulder holster venue, you've probably swept your arm. You've muzzled people 
uh, or at least potentially could muzzle somebody behind you. I mean, there's, there's a lot to actually properly running a shoulder holster. Yeah. Um, and it can get really complicated. Definitely yeah. take some extra training. <laughs> and, and I'd rather be shooting than having to worry about training on another holster platform. Yep. So, um, but they, there are also, you know, holster clips, not even necessarily just holsters, but holster clips that, um, are tuckable, um, where you can have a tucked in dress shirt or whatever with them. Um, you know, but if you wear a suit jacket too, that's, that's going to act like a cover true. garment as well, you know, where you'll be able to carry maybe strong side, um, towards the hip. And that's, you know, that's going to be a little bit easier than carrying appendix. Um, you know, so you may have to switch it up that way, but just depends on how you dress and there's nothing wrong also with, um, you know, going to a tailor if, you know, it's somebody you trust and say, Hey, you know, I need maybe this specific pair of pants or this shirt kind of bloused out a little bit, or you buy, you know, yeah. size too big for your dress pants and say, Hey, you know, I, I, you know, carry pretty often because you think about people do it for the secret service and they do it for any kind of, um, low key security. I mean, there's a, there's a huge application for that kind of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, they also make those things that cover the trigger guard that you can hook to your, your belt and put in your pocket. So if you're carrying something really small, like a Glock 42 or a, an LCP or something like that, that could be a really good option. It definitely has to cover the trigger guard. That's no the matter big what. Thing. Yep, like, that's the big thing. That, yeah. That's the most important. And those things really aren't my ideal option, but it is an option. Um, the other thing might be ankle carry. Yeah, that uh, could be it too. But I know from for my, for my suits at least, my dress pants are different. But when my suits, when I'm wearing suits, you know those those pant legs kind of rise up a little bit more than than normal dress pants. Right. So the option of of flashing your primary, secondary down there in ankle carry is a lot higher. Yeah, that's something to consider as well. But um, you can find ways to dress or, or carry from uh, different kinds of dress, whether that's formal or casual or something in between, especially like work carry, like a lot of people, maybe you are allowed to carry at work, but um, there you have a certain dress code. Maybe you have to wear a button down shirt or, uh, you know, dress pants or something like that, that, you know, you have to kind of maybe think about dressing around the gun if it's important enough to you to carry while you're at work. Yeah. And, and you know, we're, we're looking at it a man's perspective. What True. about if it's a, a woman in the office, you know, if, if she's got to wear a dress or a skirt or something, I mean, that's, you're in a whole different ball game and I am no professional at ladies clothing by any means. Sure. I mean, you can understand, you can understand there's a whole different dynamic if she's wearing like a, a, a fancy fitted suit skirt or whatever, you know, where she, mm -hmm. you can't ankle carry, you're not going to be able to appendix carry. Um, but there are options. Um, what's that ladies, Deanne, Lu Deanne Adams. There's a lady out there that makes pretty good concealable undergarments for ladies that have a lot of options, whether it be like thigh carry or something. They actually conceal really well. Um, yeah. There's the flashbang, which which is a kind of a I, I don't know that that holster actually scares me. It's just a bra with a that carries a gun, you know, on uh, on at chest height on the bra. To me, yeah. that seems like it could be dangerous. You could. You know, if you're a gal and you get excited on accident and, and press that trigger on the way out, I mean, you could shoot yourself in the heart. That seems kind of yeah, kinda scary, but yeah. Well, actually, I so I don't know if it you might heard, be your, might be your only option. And go ahead. I was say I don't know if you heard about it, but there was um, a woman in town here who um, got she called the cops. Uh, she was running in the park at like five o'clock in the morning, and she called the cops because she got shot, right? At least that's what she said. And she said she didn't oh, hear it, story, didn't see yeah. where it was coming from. Uh, the story that kind of came out a couple weeks later was that after the detectives kind of pressed her on her story not adding up, apparently she had a negligent discharge and, and shot herself in the stomach. Oh, geez. So I don't know what the full story oh, was, but goodness. once I heard about that, my the gears immediately started turning. Like, okay, so obviously she was either concealed carry or open carrying, you know, if she was going for like a morning run or something like that, maybe she had a belly band or maybe she did have one of those flashbang style horse holsters or whatever. Um, and like thinking about how you can ND into your own stomach, you know? So, 
and it made me think like, man, there's a lot of unsafe ways to carry out there. Yeah, that's, that's super crazy. And that, I mean, there's, there's options out there for like jogging and stuff, but as you can see, that stuff can fail. I mean, that's, or, or she maybe altered it or it was using it in a way that wasn't recommended by the manufacturer. So. Yeah, they really didn't tell like the full story, but I remember reading about that and immediately thought like, okay, there's some kind of, some sort of, you know, less than ideal gun handling going on here that resulted in, you know, shooting yourself in the stomach, which is, you know, which is not great. Oh man. So. That's, uh, (laughs) well, it could have ended obviously way worse for her too. Yeah. She's still pretty lucky, but hopefully that, uh, that taught her a lesson. Yeah, for Good sure. Training, my heavens, get training. Yeah, but so I mean, you think about the. I mean, the, sometimes those belly bands or those flashbangs are you know options and stuff, but you gotta kind of maybe balance your um, balance your convenience or like if how you want to carry with how safe it is. You know, you want to make sure you keep that in in, in yeah. mind. Yeah, and and using it for the intended purpose, right? Also, so that, yeah. maybe that belly band was a good option for, you know, not running. <laughs> <laughs> but when you run, that's maybe it's just not there's not the proper retention for that kind of movement, right? And, and the gun just slipped out. I mean, there's you got to use it. You got to use it as, you know, prescribed. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, but yeah. So uh, just being able to figure out how to carry for different kinds of dress, um, whether that's formal, casual, active or anything like that. There are products around there that um, are made in ways to carry that you can, um, you can make that happen. So um, another one that I had, it was um, driving for a long period, or maybe you're in the car more often than not. Um, and maybe not carrying in that regard. What do you think of that? So I'm kind of torn because I drive a lot too, right? Like I sure. come back and forth to Boise often. Yeah. Um, there, there's kind of two methods of thought, right? So in reality, I, I probably shouldn't disarm, right? I probably should find a carry option that, that allows me to drive in comfort, but sure. that's harder and harder too. You know, I mean, you can't go strong side because that interferes with the seat belt, appendix works okay but then it's uncomfortable so what do you do i mean i guess i guess you could take your gun out and you know mark was talking about or uh, nick was talking about it last week i think about those magnets you can attach to the dashboard sure but i i think if if you get in a car accident or something stuff's flying around all over the place then then you've lost a gun and and that's not good yeah it's a bad idea so, uh, it's tough it's kind of a tough thing to think about and maybe that is where the ankle option comes in um the ankle holster option because it'd be yeah it's not going to really be bugging you on if you're right-handed and it's on your left ankle you know it's it's not going to be bugging you too much yeah i mean even so otherwise if it's, it's if it's on your left ankle one. and you're left-handed that also works too i think it depends on how yeah. long you are driving for like you know if you're just commuting to work and maybe it's 15 20 minutes that's not the worst thing, um, you know, but if you're driving four or five hours, yeah, maybe figuring out another way to carry is a, is a good idea, you know? And I have driven, you know, the four and a half hours between here and Boise um, without taking my gun out. And some of it's if I've eaten a lot too the day before or something and, and my waistline changes just a fraction of an inch or, I mean, that, that yeah. can make the difference too. That's true. You'll feel the difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or or maybe you need to adjust the seating position. You know, maybe you need to lean back that backrest just a little bit to to open up that angle for you. Yeah. And, uh, but appendix carry definitely can work, um, while you're driving too. Although, you know, for a long time, it may get a little uncomfortable, but. Yeah. If, if you're driving, like say 20, 30 minutes, maybe even up to an hour, you're, it, hopefully it's not irritating you that much. And maybe you need to change, uh, change the holster. I mean, the holster might be the problem. Right. Maybe it's riding too high or riding too low. Yeah. And that's one of the things that I was actually going to bring up. And that's another one too. And in addition to driving is just that it's uncomfortable um, from the get go, you know? And um, I think one of the things you think about that is if it's uncomfortable, well, carrying a gun isn't comfortable no matter what. Yeah. And I don't think it should be comfortable. 
Yeah, it should be. I mean, you should be reminded. No, I mean, I think you should be reminded that it's there and that, um, you know, you're you have that responsibility. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I I, I agree. I think I think you should never really forget that you have it on because the people that I see. uh, Well, I shouldn't say that's kind of sounds mean, but a lot of the times I see people that do carry it for a living and they forget it's there and then they forget how to respect it. Yeah, and, it gets uh, into the complacency you know, you aspect even, of things. Yeah. And and you get complacent in every activity. I mean, I see cabinet shop workers, they get complacent around the power tools, around the table saw. I see, um, you know, you get complacent anywhere. You get complacent in your car driving to and from places. Yeah, for I mean, sure. All of us are absolutely guilty of that. And so I think it's, sh- in a way, it should be a little uncomfortable, like you say, to remind you of that responsibility of, of what you're carrying yeah and i mean you do um, get but, you do get used uh, to that, it but yeah and that probably is the number one complaint is it it just it's uncomfortable to carry and so they just stop carrying well so, I, I will say I, that i would say oh sorry go ahead i was gonna say i i think that i so if it's uncomfortable maybe you have the wrong holster I'm willing to bet that you actually more mm-hmm. commonly have the wrong belt or not a strong enough belt to carry what you're trying to carry. And if you change out your belt for a good yeah. quality, dedicated gun belt and a good quality holster, you're going to, it's going to carry a lot more comfortably distribute that weight a lot more comfortably. It's going to be way, way, way more comfortable. Yeah. And I would say that the gun belt or your carry belt is probably the most important thing to comfortability and you won't understand it until you actually have a good gun belt until you've gone from the Walmart 1099 special to a good gun belt. And they're expensive. Like a good belt is, is not cheap, but there's a reason why they're not cheap. Yep. Um, and, and you know, maybe when you say gun belt, some of the new carriers are thinking, I don't want to have a, one of those fancy nylon things with the stupid Cobra buckles. And I mean, I, I have to dress nice. Well, there are some extremely nice handcrafted leather belts um, that are rigid and will change the way you carry forever. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't need to necessarily look like it's, um, you know, a, a tactical belt and that sticks out all the time. You know what I mean? You can actually have one that looks like it's a good old fashioned leather belt, but it really is built and reinforced and has, you know, the hardware and maybe some plastic or some kind of um, rigid polymer in the middle that'll help keep that gun up and distribute the weight. But it really does make a night and day difference, especially if you if you don't have a regular, you know, carry gun belt. And, and to your point too, that, you know, finding out the most comfortable ways to carry for you, both, you know, in terms of, you know, comfort and printing and, and all that kind of stuff does come down to, belt and holster selection and it's not a cheap endeavor you have to spend some time and spend some money um to try out different holsters and different belt combinations and um you know to find really what works for you that's why there's so many different kinds on the market same thing with uh with firearms where there's so many different kinds of firearms on the market because it's such a personal choice um that you really have to you know figure out what works for you and you might have to spend a little money and time to do that yeah yeah so you know i say they're they're not they're not inexpensive (laughs) right so but they're not terribly expensive either so my my nephew um carries a lot but he has to dress nicely for work right and and so he chose i'm gonna just throw another shameless plug out there he went to hank's gun belt and i just pulled up their website yeah and i mean they have belts for every fashion um and they're nice looking gun belts and, and, and maybe it's kind of confusing. So what's like the difference between just a leather belt from like a, maybe a Western store or something to a gun belt. Well, most gun belts are reinforced with maybe a strip of steel or some kind of Kydex or something in between the two laminations of leather that keep it rigid. Um, I don't know if you've had a, a leather belt for a long time, you kind of know how it, it starts to shape and kind of sag in certain places. And, and it's, I guess, broke in, uh, in, right. in a way. Yeah. Well, these belts don't do that. They, they stay rigid. They stay where they're supposed to go. 
so it holds that holster in um in the most comfortable place possible it's not going to be sagging on your hip if you carry you know three o'clock or nine o'clock or whatever if you're right or left-handed it's it's not going to sag and and pinch into your hip it's not going to sag and and pinch where you don't want to pinch an appendix carry it's going to stay where it's supposed to stay and um, these belts they start looks like about 60 bucks or so and they go on up and i know that can be expensive but everything's expensive i mean yeah a good holster a good holster and a good belt need to be expensive well and it's also probably the last one you need to buy for a while you know what i mean oh they last they last forever yeah they're handcrafted i mean they're they're good good belts they'll last forever yeah so that's definitely something to keep in mind um and uh yeah hanks is a great place I've, i have a belt from them believe it or not and it's worked pretty well um and like a good kind of if you're especially if you're at a uh if you're at a gun store and you're looking at different belts and stuff one kind of good litmus test for that is to um not put it on you but like kind of you know put it like you were but like just kind of hold it up in the air and if it holds its shape in the air you've got a pretty good one it, it you know it shouldn't sag like steve said um, or kind of bend down. It should hold its shape kind of yeah. however you hold it in the air. That's kind of a good barometer to test if it's a, if it's a good gun belt or not. Yeah. Yeah. There, it, it sounds silly. It doesn't sound like it makes any sense, but once you make that transition, you'll say, man, I should have done this sooner. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it'll make it, your, it's a difference. It'll make your carrying a lot more comfortable. So, um, another one I th- thought of, um, was that, I have um, a significant other who is against me carrying. I've actually heard that before too. Yeah. Have you? Oh, yeah. That's it's, that's kind of a tough one. I, I've talked to, I've talked to guys, you know, buying guns in the stores, and then they're like, "Well, my wife, she's pretty anti-gun, or she doesn't want me buying anything, but they buy it anyways," you know, and I. We can't control the dynamic at home. I mean, that once that guy's made that decision, husband or wife, whoever is the pro gun in that relationship, I mean, it's up to them to to figure out how to get it home and and complete the sale at home. I that's guess your you gun, that's say, your but, gun fight, not ours. Yeah, and, and hopefully not literally, but it very well could be. <laughs> uh, it's tough. Like, I mean, I've never had to worry about that. We, we, you've talked to my wife, you know, yeah. she's, she's not anti-gun by any means. Not at all. But she's not super, she's not super like pro-gun either. Like she's not crazy 2A like I am. Sure. Um, yeah, that that is kind of tough. Um, my recommendation would to respect their wishes as much as you can, but uh, I'd probably still carry. Honestly, I'm so stubborn. I'd carry anyways, even if my <laughs> wife didn't like it. Well, and um, one, of, one of the things that you could, I mean, maybe do if you feel comfortable enough to, to make it happen is can, you know, I don't know if they, maybe if they were like kind of ambivalent about it and they, they're not sure if they're maybe not fervently against it, like maybe try to carry when you go out with them for the day or whatever and see if they notice. And then at the end of the day, be like, Hey, by the way, I was carrying like all day. Yeah. I mean, you might have to sleep on the couch or something, but might help you Might you help know, prove your point. Who did I talk to? I talked to s- somebody or we heard a story somewhere where she was the spouse, the, the wife in the relationship. She was anti-gun, like uh-huh. vehemently anti-gun. Um, but they lived in like Portland or somewhere like that. And, and all of a sudden, like that relationship changed, right? She's like, we need to get a gun in the house. Really? I'm yeah. I'm worried for this, uh, for our safe, for our safety. So the, the times that we live in right now with the, with the riots or peaceful protests or whatever you want to call it and, and COVID and people being cooped up. I mean, it, it's kind of a, a crazy time and maybe it's an opportunity to um, get that less comfortable spouse into some classes yeah to uh you know to open them up a little bit yeah for sure um it just depends on you know what uh what the situation is kind of you know yeah i mean i've i've sold guns to women who've had their homes broken into and 
and they would never have done that stuff before, but they were super scared about, you know, once, once your vulnerable vulnerabilities have been exposed and, and you have no way to defend yourself, you, you tend to swing the pendulum too far. Sure. Um, You know, I've, I've talked, I've talked with these women before I've, uh, you know, I've worked with them before in the range with one-on-ones. Um, but you don't want to get to that point, right? You want to, you hopefully you want to war game that scenario before it ever gets to that point And you're already prepared. Yeah. You should be having the conversation so, already before actually bringing home a gun and a holster and say, well, I'm going to start carrying, you know? Yeah. I mean, it, I can imagine that there could be some really terrible uh, consequences of bringing a firearm home to a spouse that's anti-gun or, yeah or a significant other that, that is not for guns. I mean, that could end up pretty bad. I mean, you could, it could end a relationship in, in all honesty. Some people are that passionate about it. it so that is completely up to you to decide on how to fight that, that, that dynamic. Yeah. So I would say, make sure you have that um, conversation first before anything else. Yeah. Yeah. You need to, you need to prime the pump, so to speak to, <laughs> yeah, to make sure that you're at least, breaking down some of those barriers because yeah. it, it might not be a good idea. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah. Um, I think that's all I had actually for kind of your big, kind of your common, um, excuses or to not carry or objections to not carry, but, um, to kind of circle back to the beginning, um, you know, there are times where you either shouldn't carry or, you know, not caring is the right decision. And the first thing I can think of that we haven't talked about yet is um, if it's illegal to carry in certain buildings in your state or your municipality. Yeah, or, I, want, I wanted to bring that up for sure. Yeah. Well, why don't you take us there? Yeah, I was hoping we'd touch on that. So um, in Idaho, right? I mean, I'm not an attorney. Mark's not an attorney. This is definitely not legal advice. Um, you have to seek out the local laws in your city and state because those can vary from city to city within a state. Very um, much so. Now, now hospitals, schools, any kind of federal building, you're prohibited from carrying a firearm, concealed or or exposed. It doesn't matter. You are prohibited from carrying a firearm or honestly a weapon for that matter. Even a pocket knife could be construed as a weapon, right? Right. So you need to understand those laws. Now, private property is a different story. Um, we talked about the mall, uh, maybe certain stores. You know, it, every store has the right and honestly the privilege to, to post um, no firearm signs on their buildings. And it's up to you if you want to patronize those places or not. I mean, a private business has that right, whether we like it or not. Um, I in my opinion, and I know Mark kind of feels the same way concealed is concealed. Yeah. Right. So if, if uh, they don't know, then they don't know. Now what's the worst that could happen, right? Are we going to get arrested? If somebody finds out we're carrying, let's, we use them all as an example, because that's probably a, one of the most common places people are going to anyways. Right. So right. if you go into the mall and the mall security sees your gun, are you going to get arrested? No, probably not. You'll be asked to leave. Um, you'll be asked to leave. Now, if you want to push the issue, they'll they'll proceed with a, maybe a trespass or something. If you push the issue farther, yeah, you're, you'll probably go to jail um, for doing something stupid. But if they ask you to leave, then just leave. You don't have to be there. Right. right? There's, there's no need to go there. Like if it's your favorite Mexican restaurant and they find out that you're carrying a gun and they don't like it and they kick you out. Well, that's your bad. Yeah. Um, you decided to kind of take that chance. Yeah. Yeah. You should have either carried differently or, or not carried that day or something. Right. You, or, you know, we talked about taking knife classes from Adam. Maybe you need to put some different tools in the toolbox. Right. To have some, have some other safety options. So, well, and it, the other uh, thing too, is that it, you could also, you know, think that you, maybe you just made an honest mistake and that, you know, that happens yeah. and that you can learn from that experience. But um, I think, you know, maybe the point that you're getting at is that you have to kind of weigh your options where, you know, there's a difference between a private property sign that says maybe, you know, don't carry or maybe it's against your work policy to not carry or whatever. And that maybe that yeah. choice is up to you. But if you're trying to carry in like a federal building or a hospital or someplace like that. You're going to you're going to face a little bit stiffer consequences and you're not 
We don't recommend doing that. No, if you enjoy carrying your gun and expressing your Second Amendment rights, then you should not carry in any kind of a federal building or uh, or malls or airports. <laughs> right. Don't, don't do that. I know, I know a guy that got, uh, he's actually a rep that accidentally left one of his guns in his carry-ons when he, from repping a show. Oh, geez. That was a, a long, long day for him. Yeah. Um, he, they ended up, I mean, they worked things out, but uh, still, it was a very, very uncomfortable few hours in a small room with people in the airport that are probably not pleasant to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're not assuming the best for that matter. No. So, so, so don't do it. Yeah. Understand the laws. Part of our response, it is a responsibility for us as concealed carry holders to understand and obey the law. Not, not an option. It is our responsibility. Yeah. And ignorance will not get us out of, of any problems. Uh, no, it sure won't. It, it's still going to give you a headache at the very least. So, I mean, and that's the thing, yeah. even if you are a, um, you know, in the gun world, maybe you're, you know, in the gun industry and you just, you get complacent a little bit and that one time can get you into trouble, you know? Yeah. And it's not worth it. Like it's not worth the hassle. Like I say, if you're in a private biz- place of business and, and, uh, and, and they ask you to leave, don't, you know, be a good steward. We talk about being good stewards of the second amendment, be respectful. It's their business. It's their property. Right. And maybe you just leave, leave without a problem and, and maybe they'll let you back in. If, if you're going to cause a problem, I mean, we see stories at those big, big box stores where the guy causes a problem and the cops show up and then he's banned for life. I mean, I understand making a statement and, and I definitely understand defending the second amendment but sometimes there's better avenues of defending that right yeah you kind of ask yourself is this a battle you really want to fight at this time and you know in your day or your life or whatever um you know but to that to you know the degree too that you may want to have kind of a a way to safely store that firearm in your car because you know like you said it could be that maybe you're at your favorite restaurant and they come up to you and say hey you know i don't know if you know this but you know, we actually have a no firearms policy, blah, blah, blah. And you could say, oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't know or I didn't see or it was my mistake. I didn't even think about it. And then you can go store that in your vehicle and kind of go about your day without any hassle. You know what I mean? Rather than making a scene or getting kicked out or, you know, having having some kind of issue. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there are some really good options out there. Uh, was it Cryptic? No, what's the... Vault Tech? <laughs> That's a design. The Vault Tech. That's the one. Yeah. They some of those, those vaults are, you can install them in your trunk of your car, like bolt them to the metal in the trunk of your car. That's a pretty good option. Right. Making it very Um, difficult to get for somebody that's an unauthorized user to get out, get that out. You know what I mean? Yeah. So there's, there's ways I wouldn't just chuck it under the seat. Uh, that that's kind of (laughs) stupid. Um, you know, I, I guess I'm guilty of it. You know, don't put stickers all over your car that say a Glock fanatic and come and take it and that kind of stuff. Right. You're kind of inviting uh, uh, I, some issues there. I, like, like I say, I guess I'm kind of guilty of that. And some of my previous vehicles, I've decorated it probably too obviously, but I'd never left my, my firearm in my vehicle. Like, sure. That way I, I did not leave it in there because that's, that's just poor planning. Yeah. Especially unsecured. Yeah. Because, yeah, you know, and, and who's, who's responsible if it gets stolen? That you is, think, you think that you think the thief's going to go do a forty four seventy three on that firearm <laughs> and take possession of it again? No. Yeah. I don't think so. No. So something to keep in mind. Um, but yeah, I think, uh, that about wraps it up for me. Are there any other, um, uh, issues or, uh, objections or uh, excuses that you've heard in your time that uh, people have said to not carry? Mm. No, I think, I think we pretty much hit on the major ones, you know, like whether to have to change your clothing type or like I said, printing was what the first thing we talked about. And probably the majority was it's so uncomfortable. And, uh, right. and I think we pretty much hit all those. Yeah, I think we did too. So we did good today. Yeah. Um, well, we'll close it out then for now. Maybe if we missed one or maybe you have a, um, an objection or an excuse to carrying or uh, an insecurity about carrying that you'd like to address, let us know podcast at II shooting.com, uh, or you can message us at Facebook or Instagram at range minded podcast and let us know if we missed one or, uh, 
if you want to send us a message about anything, we, we take it all. So Heck yeah, even, even the stuff that you don't like, or yeah, just, just tell us. Or, uh, you know what, well, Mark, maybe, maybe if you, um, if you email us a question that you think is too stupid to ask, or maybe you're too embarrassed to ask somebody else, <laughs> we can address it and answer it for you. Yeah. And even if you want to keep it anonymous, I will keep it anonymous. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So, <laughs> well, we'll close that one. Down. I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty stupid. I'm a stupid guy. I can make stupid answers up. So. And we vo- we both have had dumb questions about things, you know, so we're always learning. <laughs> That's right. So thank you for listening. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thanks, guys. Be safe. Thanks. Thanks for listening to Range Minded. Find us online at Range Minded Podcast on Facebook or send us an email at podcast at iishooting.com. We're always happy to get feedback, episode suggestions, whatever you want to send us, really. And be sure to subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and pretty much wherever else you get your podcasts from. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.